Hello, this is Christopher J. Robinson speaking. Hi, Mr. Robinson. How are you? Oh, I'm doing good, thanks. How about you? Um, I've been better. I've been worse. Um... Oh, it, uh, is it sad to hear? It sounds like a bad thing. Yeah, it's, um... I was listening to the, the siren radio and I heard your, uh... Heard, I heard the advertisement for your documentary. I saw you getting into that Twitter war with that, uh, that one person and you posted the link, so I watched it. Um, do you do, uh... What sorts of documentaries do you work on? Well, whatever documentaries are good enough to make, uh, we, we just... We take uh, hints and tips, and we look at it and see if it's got a dramatic potential. If it's got a real story to it. What about the uh, story of an inmate who was sent up to Bolingbrook with uh, twelve counts of murder pending on them, and then they mysteriously passed away? Sounds interesting for sure. I'll have to look into that. Do you have any leads or anything we can uh, look into? I can. I can give you a lot of information. Do you want to meet up and talk in person, maybe? Okay. Uh, yeah. Give me a little few seconds. I'm just gonna wrap something up. Okay. No hurry at all. Um, meet me. Do you know where the the crazy like alien sculpture is out in Sandy Shores? The crazy what sculpture? The big, like, alien thing. Like, they painted the world on the ground, and it's really beautiful. Uh, yeah, I do know what it is, actually. Yeah, meet me out there. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll bring my taxi. There's a couple of spots I'd like to show you for, I don't know, like, what do you call it? The, the extra footage in between all the stuff? Okay, uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll try and get up there as quick as I can, but I've got this bloody van. It doesn't go too fast. Okay, no hurry. Uh, no hurry at all. Alright, see you soon. Alright, I'm gonna go up with the Felica. Ah, y'all doing some flight All training? Right. Uh, I wish. Oh, okay. No, ma'am. Go get them, officers. Oh, so we can pull out a vehicle because we're at the. We're at Sandy Shores SO. This is my home. Yep, it's the kick one of brother home. Oh man, I love that the cops showed up, dude. Because this is gonna plant that seed. This is gonna plant that seed. Every all three of those cops have to be like, why is this bitch making a payphone call outside of Sandy Shores PD right now? All three of them. Oh man, the drum, the drama, dude. Do I want her to get caught? No, but I don't want it to be. So look, here's the thing. If you want to play a serial killer in RP and you want to never get caught, that is easy. It is easy to do that because mechanically the cops are super limited on how much they can tie things back to you. That was low-key a meta unlock? How? How was that a meta unlock?
Because assuming they're going to find Chris somewhere up in Sandy. You drove the cab. Chris says something about a watermelon cab. Yeah, yeah. Here's the thing, though. Uh, they're not going to find him in Sandy. Ta-da! <laughs> what did I say when we were just talking about this? The trick is call him from a payphone. Meet somewhere discreet. So this is actually within viewing distance of the PD. Change locations. So we're going to take Chris on a little tour. Ideally, the victims don't, uh, whenever it's a serial killing like that, and uh, with somebody like Chris, I'm pretty sure Chris will ICU from this, which means that he probably will not remember. Ideally, whenever you have serial killer victims, um, it would be lame for a serial killer victim, like, just because they were found by EMS to remember everything, right? So I think all 10 or 11 of mine have played along with the clues we left behind. Um, so, for instance, one of them uh, still had a note that said Jessica. So they still knew that Jessica was the person they were going after. One of them still had a phone record of Gemma's phone number. Um, and to the best of my knowledge, none of them have woken up and gone, the lady with the green hair stabbed me. Um, so it's, it's kind of on, you know, you're, you're relying quite a bit on the victims to play along as well, to realize what's happening. Oh, slash E umbrella actually works. Interesting. Interesting. Just say the cab because it's unique. True. It's very true. Lots of people recognize the cab as soon as they see it. You're not wrong. The cab is also a subtle enough clue that it would be a fun one to use. Um, like yellow and green in color taxi cab scene. Uh, scene leaving the air. It's like, oh, well, or green and pink. It's like, well, it got stolen. I don't know what you want me to tell you. I've always wished that this car was drivable with a big ass UFO on it. I'm hyped for this too. We haven't killed anybody in a while. We haven't killed anybody in a minute. It's nice being able to, uh, oh my word. The fans on my streaming PC just like really kicked off for a second there. Um, hello? 
Mr. Robinson. Tell me about tell me how you feel about it, Ezekiel. Tell me tell me how you feel about it. Ah, there he is. <laughs> Hello. Uh, hi, hi there. Sorry, I uh, didn't really see you pull up or where you walked after that. Oh right, I saw I saw these fellas walking around. I thought that uh, maybe it was you. I gotcha. Nope, those are just some of the uh, local hippies that live out here. Right, right, okay. The spot's not particularly relevant to anything I wanted to talk about. It's just really... I don't know. I've always enjoyed it. Yeah, it certainly is unique, that's for sure. I don't really get all of the, uh, you know, beam us up Scotty stuff, but whoever did the artwork uh, did a really good job with it. Yeah, they sure did. Kind of crazy. Everything's they've got like three D art, you know. It's kind of unique, kind of interesting. And they've got all these weird. Um, if you look at it from a distance, you can see them. But if you look over here, got all these weird, like I don't know, crop circle-y looking things all the way around the rim. Oh. I always wondered what oh. it meant. That is interesting. What is that? Not to spook you too. Not to spook you, but I. <laughs> so I was doing a, a puzzle thing one day. Some people left a note, some notes behind, and uh, one of the answers uh, led me straight out here. Oh. And uh, yeah. Found a dead body here, actually. <gasps> what? Well, uh, not dead, just very unconscious. Uh, sh should we be here? I mean, this seems like a dangerous place all of a sudden. Uh, I think it was kind of a one-off thing. The guy said he got attacked by aliens, whatever that means. What? What? Aliens? <laughs> You don't believe in aliens, do you, Mr. Robinson? Maybe. You know, I've heard stories and stuff about uh, Rodsworth and stuff and all those crashes. It's real interesting stuff. Uh, I don't have any reason not to believe it, I guess. I guess it's kind of your job to keep an open mind on things, right? Right, right. All right, let's take a drive. Let's talk. Ooh. Okay. You don't mind leaving your van here, do you? Ah, uh, well, uh... Part of, part of the journey requires climbing, that's the only reason I ask. And, uh, my taxi's actually surprisingly good at climbing. Um, I might do an old Back to the Future 3 and see if I can bury it in a cave, uh... Another there, maybe. I think... Ah, uh, never mind. I mean, honestly, I think you're about as close to a cave as you're gonna get right here. Hold on. Follow me. Right. I see a thing. Problem is, gasoline's gonna... Uh, 
There we go. Should be safer than uh, leaving it up there. All right, so just so we're clear, no recordings right now, right? Yeah, that, yeah, that's fine. I've not got my camera crew with me anyway. All right. All right, so I guess we can start at the end because that's uh, always the most interesting part, right? Right. So the girl that I was seeing, uh, By the way, I introduced myself, right? I'm Jessica. I don't believe you did, but uh, nice to meet you, Jessica. My name's Christopher J. Robinson, but you can call me Chris. It's nice to meet you, Chris. Nice to meet you. So, have you ever heard of the vampire killings? The vampire killings? I can't say I have. I don't know a whole hell of a lot about it. Not as much as I should, probably. girl that I was seeing, Miss uh, Sylvia. Sylvia Televere. She, she found her way behind these walls. Shit, how long ago was that? Probably a month and a half, maybe two months ago. Right. And Wait, what she... Hmm. What do you mean she got arrested and put in jail? Yeah, she was arrested by one of the police officers. I don't remember which one. Oh. Apparently she was suspected of uh, being this vampire killer, whatever it is. What, a vampire killer or a vampire killer? If, like, a, were, they, were they the vampire or were they killing vampires? Um, she was accused of being the vampire. What? But, uh, that, that, uh, who accused? The police wouldn't accuse because vampires don't exist. Uh, who accused them? That is what Sylvia and I both kept saying. Vampires are not real. Right, they're not. <laughs> right, right. But apparently there was a string of bodies found. Um. Uh, I don't know how many, a, a few. What, like all tied together in a, in a string? Who would do that? No, no, not tied together in a string, just left one after another, you know, like, oh, I don't know, right. one a week, one every two weeks, something like that. That makes more sense, actually. At least one of these people actually died, uh, like, I don't know, dead, if not left for dead sort of people, you know? Right, yeah, I get you. Jeez Louise. One thing that these victims all had in common with one another is they were found left in some desolate state after being stabbed. With... Wait, 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 filmed? No, after being stabbed. They'd be left after being stabbed. And they would have teeth marks on their neck. How do we know it's not just a cannibal and not a vampire? Well, I don't think any pieces of their flesh were missing. Don't cannibals usually take bites out of people? Well, I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a bloody cannibal. I'm not too sure. I think that's like the definition or whatever. Cannibals usually eat people. I mean, oh, I guess... Right, okay. I guess drinking people's blood would kind of be, like, part of cannibalism, right? Right. Like a cannibal that's on a liquid diet or something. Yeah, like a glass of rosé. Just, uh, wash down your, your mutton, or whatever the hell human's meat is called. So... And I'm kind of delaying, because I want to get up to the next spot before I really, uh, say why Sylvia being accused of these things bothered me, but... She... Okay, she was in there for a couple of weeks. Uh, 
not too long, but in a couple of weeks. And eventually... She was accused of murder and she's only been in jail for a few weeks? Well, that's the... That's the awful part. She died in there. <gasps> no trial, no... No chance for the victims to come and share their story. No chance for her to prove her innocence. She just died one day. How did how did she die? If you would believe it, of all things, kidney failure. What the? What? what? Kidney failure in jail. But how do you die? Kidney failure in jail. Uh, inadequate medical treatment, I would assume. Improper diet. Pre-existing issues, I have no fucking clue. Oh, jeez. Bill Box gave me the report, but it... Not a doctor, it didn't make a lot of sense. Something about a... A perforation, I think. Which I think is a hole, right? Right. Something about a oh, hole, a in, hole. Her, in her kidney. So here's the part that really fucked me up about all this. Nope, oh, just be just be careful. Oh will. So about three months before Sylvia was thrown in jail, I was found on top of this mountain. Right here. Right. What do you mean you were found up here? I was right here ish, is what the medical report said. What were you doing up here? I don't have the faintest idea what I was doing up here. Wait, what? What? If, uh, what? I was found with a stab wound in my kidney and bite marks on my neck. You were bit by a vampire? I was bit by someone who thought they were a vampire, I guess. R right. Um. Mr. Robinson, if I was a vampire, would I really be driving around with you like this? Come on. Well, no, now we're up on a mountain. I'm not too sure. Look, the sun, the sun's out. Oh, wait, I thought there was werewolves. I thought they come out at night. But vampires are like allergic to the sun or whatever, right? Oh, right. Have you got an EpiPen nearby just in case? Or at the very least, I think they sparkle according to some mythologies. <laughs> sparkle? That sounds lame. Imagine a vampire that sparkles. What the hell? It's not very scary. So I was found up here. And, I don't know, the medics, they took me down to pillbox. I was in and out of consciousness the whole time. I, oh, I had only met Sylvia one time. Oh, oh God. Okay. <laughs> wow. I'm sorry. Just, you're just getting real emotional about it. I'm sorry. All right, let's hop in the car. I'm sorry. <laughs> The last thing I want is the cops all showing up thinking someone's being serial killed on top of this mountain. Oh no, I'm not a serial killer, even though a lot of people have said I am. Why on earth would people accuse you of being a serial killer, Mr. Robinson? People say it because of the way I dress, and I don't think that's very fair. Oh my I god. Don't... What's that dog doing up here? That is definitely a mountain lion. Have you never seen a mountain lion? Mountain lion? Isn't it... what? Okay, I'm trying to avoid hitting it, and it just... it really wants to be hit by a car. Oh, oh it's, it's okay. Has it a mountain lion if it has no stripes? Lions don't have 
stripes. That's cheetahs. Sure thing. I mean, I, I guess. Oh god. It's fine. Careful. I've done this a time or two. It's a little lake I like to come to over here. Oh. <clears throat> so I was found on top of that mountain with like three liters of blood missing out of my body. Vampires uh, drink blood. Stab wound to my kidney and just bleeding out. In the kidney? In the kidney. And there was a note that said, I'm sorry. That's all it said. Do you know anything about vampires uh, linked to kidneys? Uh, not that I'm aware of. What does the kidney do? Filter blood? I think it filters waste from, uh, I think, all sorts of areas. Blood, uh, waste byproducts, you know, stuff like that. So, probably two weeks after that, I'm talking to a friend of mine. Uh, I forget his name. He used to lead an old motorcycle club around these parts. Alright, well, I can't help you there. I don't know too many uh, motorcycle clubs. Yeah. I'm the Bondi Boys, and I think that's it. No, it definitely wasn't the Bondi Boys. Um, damn, I can't remember his name. But. So, I'm talking to him, right? And he tells me that he is fairly confident that, uh, Sylvia is a vampire. And he says that he knows just the way to prove it. So, uh, we were gonna go on a job together. Um, he and I were essentially pretending that we were gonna go, like, I don't know, rob a 24-7, rob a jewelry store. And he invites Sylvia along. So we head out to Sandy Shores, we steal a four-door car so that we can, you know, make our elaborate getaway. What, you, you, you were gonna rob it? Oh yeah, that's, I, it's not, not exactly my first rodeo robbing something, Mr. Robinson. Oh. Oh. Don't worry, I don't hurt people. I've been known to take a hostage or two, but, you know, that's just kind of business. Right. I'm not a... I'm not a hostage now, am I? Do you feel like a hostage? I guess not. So, we are driving all around Sandy Shores. And, uh, Sylvia mentions that she can't swim. At least, she says she can't swim very well. Wait, what? Yeah, a weird Wait, thing, right? Because we were trying to plan our getaway, we were trying to figure out, like, how are we going to get away from these big bad police officers. Is that something to do with vampires, not being able to swim? I'm not sure, to be honest with you. I can't swim, but I'm just because I never learned. I'm pretty sure it's witches that sink if they swim, right? That sounds right, actually. Or no, don't they float, maybe? Like if you tie a bunch of rocks around them, they'll float, maybe? But don't, doesn't everyone float? Uh, not with a bunch of rocks tied around them. Right, right. So, uh, this biker guy, he, uh, it's this ramp right here, the one that we're on. Going about 60, maybe 70 miles an hour. Oh my. Launches the car straight out into the water. 
Now, as I've already mentioned, I'm not the best at swimming. Uh, but I grab onto one of the seats in the car, it floats, I paddle myself to shore. He swims out of the vehicle. Sylvia goes down with the ship, as it were. What? She's, uh... I don't really know what happened. She panicked, maybe? She just sat in the car? Uh, she eventually crawled out of the car, but it was too late. She'd already inhaled too much water. Um, so the biker guy, he goes back, he gets her. He drags her ashore. I'm already, I don't know, maybe right about here. And she's not breathing. <gasps> and she barely has a pulse. Oh, God. I did CPR on her for... 14 minutes and 52 seconds before EMS showed up. Oh my god. And no. what happened when the EMS showed up? Did they manage to do anything? Uh, they got her on one of the, uh, what do they call those little machines? Uh, ones that like monitor your heart rate or whatever. Um, I can't say. Well, they got her on one of those, and the little shocky thing, and transported her back to Pillbox, uh... She wound up doing okay, uh... But my... Takeaway from that was that, uh... Once again, vampires aren't real. People who can't swim are, and, uh... That biker is, a pretty damn close to being a murderer, as far as I'm concerned. Well, I mean... It, uh, it's, uh, uh, is it really his fault? I mean... How would it not be his fault? Hitting, hitting a ramp... I like, you know, Mr. Robinson, if you told me... I don't know... That you were deathly afraid of fire, and I were to take you down to the foundry where the steel is made... Wouldn't it kind of be my fault that you went into a panic attack? At least a little bit. Right. But if we were running away from police, uh, we had to run through the foundry to escape the police, I'd be like, well, I guess I'll just uh, close my eyes and bloody think of Britain, you know? Oh, well, see, here's the thing. Like, we weren't actually running from the police at the time. We were planning our escape route, and he just... full sent the car into the water. Oh. Well, that changes things. Why would you just do that? It's like he was trying to prove a point, maybe. Why would you waste a car like that and, uh, and then dunk your friend under the water when you know they don't like it? Well, he was trying to prove that she's a vampire, and he had this uh, theory, I think, similar to what you suggested, that vampires can't swim. Well, the more you say it, the less it sounds like it makes any sense. I've never heard that before. No, I'm pretty sure I saw in a movie once that they can't cross running water, but... Or maybe it was that they can't go into houses without being invited. Oh. Well, that's just good manners, really, isn't it? It is good manners. So, Sylvia and I, uh... We meet up after all that craziness. And we drive out here. You're probably finding all kinds of fun spots tonight, aren't you? Yeah, buddy. It's our different at it. I've never really been up this uh, far north. So we drive up here. Promise not to punch me this time. I promise. Oh my. Oh. Hell of a view, right? Hell of a drop. 
So Sylvia and I oh talked for a while. Uh, I think I was standing right around here. I don't know. She kept pacing around. She was nervous. And she tells me that she's the one who attacked me that night. Just she just she just said it at, at right. Just straight up admits to it. Yeah. Oh my god! What what did you do? Well, I wanted to kill her, but what that make me? Um, equal, I think. An eye for an eye leaves the whole world blind, Mr. Robinson. Well, luckily I've got glasses, so they won't affect me. So she spends... probably 20 minutes explaining this whole situation to me. Something about some disease she contracted a long, long time ago. What, like malaria or something? Uh, something like that. A plague of sorts. Something developed in a laboratory, I guess, uh... <gasps> the Chinese virus! I don't remember exactly how she told the story, to be honest with you, Mr. Robinson, but it was, uh... Something about during the Cold War, or maybe before that. Uh, Russian scientists attempting to design a disease that would solve the world's problem of hunger. What? What the hell? What? Yeah, I don't know, some Soviet Russian nonsense. It didn't make a lot of sense to me at the time either. That didn't make some no sense to me. What? Sorry, Russians making what the? All they could make was potatoes, and they couldn't even do that right. Yeah, well, they did vodka pretty well. Well, I mean, if you're into that kind of stuff, alcohol. So she tells me that she contracted this disease. Uh... 97 years ago. Wait, how old you friend? Apparently 97. Wait. Or what? she was before she died of kidney failure. That's what she thought. You sure she didn't just die of old age? I mean, jeez. She didn't look a day older than I do. What, what do you mean? I... Good makeup or something? Or... <laughs> Definitely not makeup. Contact lenses, sure, but... Oh. And she told me that once a month or so for... I guess... 70-something years, she had been, uh... Feeding on human blood. You think she, she really was? I think she attacked me. I think there were bite marks on my neck, and I think that I was missing about 60% of the blood that should have been in my body. That makes sense to me. So she told me that I was apparently at some sort of jeopardy for uh, contracting that disease because she, uh, since I've been giving her mouth to mouth for so long or something, I don't know, never really played out that way. Right. Uh, she said you could have the disease? She said I could. It doesn't mean I do, Mr. Robinson. How would you know? You know, I think if I was feeding on human blood, I'd have a pretty good idea. Do you have to drink blood if you're a vampire? It's 
That's actually a good question. Do you? Look at that. So, we, uh... God, I need another bandage. <laughs> you really fucked me up with that punch. Oh, no. I didn't realize- I didn't realize I was so strong. So, she... I don't know. I told her that her attacking me, if that was what had happened, was far from the first time that had happened to me since I moved to Los Santos. They're supposed to be your friend. You're supposed to be able to trust them. Yeah, she wasn't really my friend at the time. At the time, we barely knew each other. Oh. How long before the, the, the prison scenario was this? Mm, about three and a half months. Three and a half months. Did she mention anyone else she might have done this to? No, but I... I never really wanted to ask, you know? Never really my business. You need a cigarette, Mr. Robinson? You're pacing a lot. I do, but I don't want to give you some secondhand smokes. I will have one with you. Oh, okay. <gasps> what the? No. What are you doing? So what I told Sylvia was that I, some things in life just aren't fair, Mr. Robinson. It's not fair. Many things in life just aren't fair. What are you doing? Stop grabbing, this. grabbing a few things. Hold on. No, no, no. Don't. Stop it. Help! Somebody! Help! No one's gonna help you out here, Mr. Robinson. Oh god, please. No. So I was victimized by three separate insane individuals. You're a pretty insane individual right now. What are you doing? This is perhaps the most insane I've ever actually been, Mr. Robinson. Most of the time this ends rather quickly. This time I'm playing with my food. Stop! What the fuck? I knew it, you son of a bitch, you vampire fuck. Part of my French. Oh God. Damn. What are you doing? Don't worry it hurts. too much. I know it does. You'll get a little lightheaded. Everything will be fine. Stop it, please. Please stop it. All right, let's see. New BBC song on the radio 30 minutes before the storm. What? What are you doing? It's, you got my phone? Sorry, I missed you yesterday. No problem. Hi, no worries. Okay. This is a really rude and invasive. How dare you? I'm only... It's probably worse than whatever the hell you're doing right now. Let me check in the last few hours, making sure you didn't tell anybody we were meeting.
I did actually over the radio. I told um, I've got a group of mercenaries. Uh, about ten of them with guns, and I told them to come and see me if I didn't check in in the next thirty seconds. So you should probably let me go. That would be very unhealthy for you, Mr. Robinson, if that were true. Well, I must say I'm really too healthy right now. Whatever you've done to my arm is making me feel weak. There we go. Let's just take those. What the? Oh, wait. Hold on. I'm silly. Yeah, you are. Let me go. Let's just make sure you weren't sneaking any pictures while we were, uh, while you were waiting on me or anything here. You won't find anything. I didn't do anything. Beautiful. You are such a clean little cookie, Mr. Robinson. Well, thank you very much. Wait a second. It's not, it's not a cookie. Don't eat me. How much do you know about mythology, Mr. Robinson? Uh, just a little bit. How much do you know about, uh, Norse mythology? Specifically, Norse mythology. Norse mythology? I'm not, I'm not too sure about too much of that. Have you ever heard of Ragnarok? Oh, yeah, that movie. It was really good, wasn't it? No, no, no. Not the stupid Marvel cinematic whatever. The actual oh, story work. of Ragnarok. Maybe I can guess from the, the movie. Is it something to do with uh, a big demon skull man in the cage area thingy? I don't know. Not too far off. Oh, well. Ragnarok is the story of the death of the universe. And, the? and the rebirth of it shortly thereafter. What, are we talking entropy over here? What are we talking? You see, what happened to, uh... What happened to Spark Ragnarok is that uh, the goddess, oh jeez, what is her name? The wife of uh, Odin. They had a son. Uh, the son's name was Baldur. Baldur. I thought it was Odin's son. No, that's Thor's last name from that shitty movie. Oh, so it is, so it is. They had many children. Most of the most of the gods were their children. But they had one in particular. His name was Baldur. And you see, Baldur was supposed to be the most beautiful, infallible creature that anyone had ever seen before. A bit like a, a bit like Blanche. So, you know what Baldur's mom did? You know, since she's like the god of everything. Got jealous? No, she didn't get jealous. Quite the opposite. Oh, Her? God. Baldur's mom went to every living creature on Earth. And every non-living creature, I guess you could call it. And she made them oh, all... What you did, well, no, things like rocks and plants. And she made every single thing promise that it would never hurt Baldur. What the? So all of the rocks, all of the trees, all of the plants, every single thing promised that it would never hurt Baldur because he was just too pure to be killed. That sounds bad, right? Snowflake generation, that's what I call it. 
But Baldur's mom forgot one thing. What? She forgot mistletoe. Oh, no. So when he comes around to Christmas, he's going to be screwed. I know, right? It's so... But it, but it's not, it's not a harmful thing, right? It's pretty prickly. It is pretty prickly. So do you know what Loki did? What, what did Loki do? Something mischievous, I bet. He did something very mischievous. <gasps> Loki had a dart made out of uh, mistletoe, like a like a big lawn dart. And one day all of the gods were, uh, yeah, one day all of the gods were having, like, a competition of sorts, like a dart-throwing competition. And there was one of the gods, he was blind. Uh, and they were all throwing these darts at Baldur, because all of the items and, you know, everything in the world, it had promised that it would never harm Baldur. So you've got these big, strong, powerful gods throwing, uh, you know, Darts made of iron, darts made of steel, darts made of diamonds. And as soon as any one of them hits Baldur, it just shatters and breaks. Well, even if, even if they, uh, if they didn't hurt him, I mean, that's kind of mean. You shouldn't just be throwing stuff at him. Baldur was having a pretty good time with it. Showing off, showing off his invincibility and all, you know. Darts bragging. So Loki gives this, uh, gives this dart to the, uh, to the blind god. And he urges him to throw it at Baldur. And the blind god says, I'll never hit him. There's no way that I could, uh, could throw it. Well, Loki offers to help him aim. So he, you know, helps him, uh, you know, pick up his, uh, you know, point his hand in the right direction, tells him more left, more right, things like that. Right. So that god throws this dart that's made out of mistletoe. He throws it as mighty as any god would. And it pierces straight through Baldur's heart. <gasps> For a second, I thought you were going to say kidneys, and they would have made, like, oh my god, kidneys and stuff. Everything would have come full circle at that point, right? Right. But instead, it went right through his heart. Straight through his heart. And he died instantly. <gasps> so, Balder, he... He died, and, and all of the gods were grieving him. And most of the gods blamed Loki. Uh, Loki thought he had the perfect plan, giving it to the blind god, making it out of mistletoe, all of this stuff. So they, they track Loki down, and they imprison him. Uh, and the way they imprison him, the, the punishment is honestly beautiful. Uh, Help me! Help me! I don't think those people care too much about you, Mr. Robinson. God damn it. Here's a reason I put, chose this very specific route. So they imprison Loki, and they, uh, they put him beneath this very slow drip of acid. Now Loki's a god, so he won't die, and he heals very quickly, but the acid drips just drop by drop splashing directly onto his face. And they tie him up with a chain, a chain that used to hold one of his children that is actually unbreakable, like literally an unbreakable chain. Can you imagine? What is it made out of, like, steel? It was something that, the, kind of something that the dwarves had put together. I don't really remember the part of the tale for that. Probably basically got steel or something. So, Loki's children, they get very upset. And that's what starts Ragnarok. Loki's children all, uh... They gather together to attempt to set their father free. Oh. 
and they fight the gods, and they kill the gods, and the gods kill them, and there's bloodshed on both sides. But that is not the part of the story of Ragnarok that I am interested in telling today. Oh, well, that's the exciting bit. Because every story needs a beginning. Right. Like episode one, the Phantom Menace. Exactly. Do you want to help me tell the Phantom Menace? Okay, yeah. Uh, so the ship uh, pulls in. Uh, what's the first line of dialogue? I'm pretty sure it's like TC-15 comes in. Alright. So, Jedi, friends, and it's uh, Obi-Wan and uh, Qui-Gon. And then uh, the, the bloody gun race sees it on the screen. It's like, They'll send Jedi to get us! That's how, he, that's how he speaks, it's not racist. They'll send Jedi! Let's send the gas in! And then they gas him. And they're like, Oh no, Dioxys gas! Hold your breath! And then they send a bunch of droids in there. The droids are all bloody waiting at the door. And like, they can't get out of there. But then all of a sudden the door opens, and all the Jedi run out, and they're bloody, they're fighting all the battle droids. And they wipe them out, and then they send those droidikas. But before they do that, new gun runs like, Where are those droidikas? And they roll in, but bloody, turns out Jedi's have super speed, which is something that wasn't previously established in the universe, but they bloody super speed down the hallway, which will never be used again in that movie or any other movie, which is kind of crazy. Oh, thank God. Can we turn the heating on in here? We absolutely... You'll be warm very soon. Oh, thank God, I'm pretty cold. So the story that I'm interested in telling is a little different. Oh, really? See, I want to go all the way back to the beginning of creation. It's a big bang. Oh, God. The world began in fire. Oh from, god. From the primordial what? chaos. Wait, stop. Wait, stop now. Okay, I get the point. It held neither point. day nor night. I get it. Oh, don't worry. I get it. Sea nor land. Life nor death. Good. The spark arose. The flame feeding on its own hunger. The flame raged and spread and became the bright world of Muselheim. A living furnace from which poured the rivers of fire and blasts hot air onto the surrounding world. Uh, I can walk, by the way. I'll just walk alongside you. You can now. Uh... Let me go now. Ah, you can't walk, Mr. Robinson. Oh. There's a potential arc flash hazard over here. Hmm, I suppose there is. <gasps> Come on, please. Let me go. Oh, there's that arc flash. I want you. Yep, you did. Ooh. Nothing to quite bring you alive like that, huh? I feel so faint. Please, just let me go. You bloody... You're taking me blood, you're shocking me. I think you've done enough. I haven't done quite enough, not yet. No, I think you have actually, probably, if you think about it, uh, probably not enough now. Okay, or let's let me go. How are you feeling, Mr. Robinson? Pretty cruddy, if you bought him a French. I don't think cruddy is really French. Oh, no. OK. 
<laughs> oh god. Now, Mr. Robinson, if you're lucky, the police are gonna find you here and you're gonna be just fine. No, 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 stop, stop, stop. You're probably not gonna remember a goddamn thing, which is a shame, because we've had a really good talk, I think. Let me out of here, you, you, you B word. Oh, I will. I'll be letting you out. Oh, God. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. Oh, God damn it. And here's to you, Mr. Robinson. Jesus loves you more than you will know. <laughs> <laughs> 